Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to today's painting tutorial. And today we're going to be painting Elden Estimont from Baratheon Heroes, Heroes 2 from Song of Ice and Fire. Perfect! Perfect! Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, yeah, I know it's been a while since I uh, recorded a video. Um, I haven't been doing that much gaming because of um, the pandemic that's going on. So hopefully you can understand. But um, I thought I'd do a, a, a video today on how to paint a couple of the Baratheon heroes. Just bear with me as I set up the camera just a little bit. Just change the angle. Alright. So there you go. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, today we're going to be painting Andrew Estamont. Which is the uh, one of the NCUs slash commanders that you can take for the Baratheon army in A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, as you can see, I did a quick, uh, very quick Xenophil. So the primer I used was um, Chaos Black, and I, I just hit it over the top with uh, with Wraithbone primer from Games Workshop as well. Um, I'm not really that good at you know all that glazing and stuff and um, and uh, all that special sort of. Zenithal highlighting, contrast paints, glazing stuff like that. So I just use it really as a guide uh, as to where I want to put more highlight because the light source that I always use is always coming from the top anyway. All right, so let's get cracking. So of course the stuff that you need, your reliable paint brushes. Uh, I've got my wet palette here from Red Grass Games. Oh, before I do anything else, I should put a hydration sheet on it you can get a bigger one which is this one here that's the studio one studio XL so obviously you got more working space but because we're just working on the one model today I just thought yeah I'll stick with the the XL uh, sorry the the standard the, the painter uh, size wet palette so just try and get all the air bubbles out stretch it out as much as I can Really shouldn't be doing it with my with with my hand, but I did sanitize, so my hands are clean. It's not oily, but of course, uh, yeah, you shouldn't be doing it this way. Uh, it's probably recommended that you get like a, a say a brush or something, and just you know, just move it along with the brush. But um, yeah, just just gone straight in with my hand, just like that. All right, so just gets all the air bubbles out. I've got about 600 of these sheets for the for the painter size edition. So you know, um, as soon as I finish one little painting project, I I just chuck it out because <clears throat> I've got that many of them. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to check out Red Grass Games, I'll I'll put a link on the on the show notes. Okay. So as you know, I I use the Reaper paints. That's the that's the line that I've been using. Um, I have sort of dabbed a little bit into the Vallejo Scale 75 stuff. Um, I, I don't re actually own any of the Scale 75 paints. I just um, I, I borrowed some from from Dan at uh, Tabletop Empires, you know, and he's had he's let me have a crack at some of the paints, the Scale 75 stuff. But you know, some people swear by it. <clears throat> it is a good line of paint. I have to admit, it's top of the line. They are expensive. Um, they once upon a time it, they were hard to source in Australia, but um, a lot more places are stocking it now. So before we get into the painting itself, I just want to give you a, a quick picture of what Elden Estimate looks like on the on the card art. Um, you could always, I guess, you could go out and do your own sort of colors um, I've done that with a couple of the minis already you know where you sort of just um, do your own paint scheme but um, with this guy I thought I might just do the art on the card itself so I'll just quickly look through that right here so Elden Estimont is a um, Character that for for mainly Baratheon, and that's so that's his art card. So that's his face there. He looks a lot like um, Donald Sutherland. 
so I might paint him in that way. So that's that's the back part. All right, so yeah, the arm is kind of dullish looking. Um, lots of dents and stuff. I guess you know he's uh, he's a uh, he's not a spring chicken, so his armor has seen better days. You know all that, all the battles that he's been through. Um, I'll also show, so, show you the um, the box art, which is I have to admit one of the better ones for some of us in fire. Um, so that's that's it there. All right, so. So you can see Estimot is that dude there. Um, yeah, it doesn't show his his sort of his pants or like uh, the color scheme of his uh, from the waist down. So I'm kind of have to use my imagination. But he is from House Estimot in Game of Thrones. So uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the lore, but he the house sigil for House Estimot is the turtle. So. It's, it's green, mostly green, um, along with yeah, High Garden is sort of green as well. I suppose you can make an argument where you can make it teal, I guess. You can do that as well. But for the purposes of, of this, I think I, I just wanted to do like, you know, your basic armor and stuff like that. Basic armor and um, yeah, probably a green cloak. Um, don't know if I want to do a bit of freehand. I guess I'll just... I might do something with the bottom part there. I'm not gonna draw a turtle. The, tur the turtle's too hard for it. I, I, I painted the, the, the turtle um, freehand on Andrew Estamont's shield. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, if I remember, I, I'll post a link as well. But yeah, um, that turtle is not easy. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint his skin. So I'm gonna go dip straight into my Reaper paints. And we'll... Let's have a look. He's an elderly fella, so we'll probably try and give him a fair, fair skin tone. So this one will be fair shadow. So from the Reaper range, it's that. There's always give you paint bottle a, a good shake. You know, also should bring out my tissue. That's where I wipe my paint. Okay. Some guys have it to this side, but I just I like it's right next to the paint pot. It's a lot more convenient. So yeah, fair shadow. Straight on. <clears throat> I will wash it with uh, flesh wash. Um, I do like to <clears throat> add a little bit of medium onto the flesh wash because. Sometimes I feel as though the, the wash is a bit too too dark. So the obviously the Lamian medium um, turns it down a bit. So I'll just set these aside for now. So I'm gonna wait for that to dry, so I might as well do the steel in the armor, along with the chainmail as well. So for this one, I'm gonna use shadowed steel. Nice basic dark steel armored color. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and go over the armor with that shadowed steel. So you might as well do the just missing a spot there. Might as well do the parts where you're gonna add the the steel as well. So parts of the sword. Oop, might zoom in. Oop, there you go. So parts of the sword, um, the scabbard, chainmail. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the scabbard just yet. I might just do it in leather as lo along with the the belt. Yeah, I might just do that. So I'll go ahead and um, I'll give the the skin uh, its flesh wash. 
So again with the flesh wash, I'm just going to use limey medium just to tone it down a bit. Probably just two parts. One, two, and uh, yep, mix it together. Or any excess parts where it pulls, just suck it up with the brush, and just wipe it off. Because there, and uh, when they when it's got the medium on it, it tends to flow a lot easier as well. So just gotta be careful of those little bits, especially around the neck. So the next color we're going to pick out is going to be the green, so I'm going to put the green on, let's see now, I'll, I'll go on the, on this cloth here, probably just do the basic artwork, um, I believe it was green, green pants, uh, yeah, the green sleeves, um, the cape, I might do yellow, I'll just do yellow for that, and the boots and the scabbard. I'll do... I'll do black. So for the greens, I'm going to use Peacock Green for the shadow. Brilliant Green for the mid-tone. And then finally Viper Green for the final layer and highlights. So some issues with the droplets, it tends to clog up and dry. So what I use, I just use a little baby clip and I just give it a poke, drag it in, wipe it off and then it should be able to flow right after. So of course some of the the base coat is still showing so that's going to need another coat of green. So we'll quickly go over that. So while the green is drying up, I thought I'd do the next layer for the skin, which is to go back with the first shadow and just uh, go over some of the areas of the skin. And of course, occasionally wash your brush just to get rid of some of the paint and of course to sharpen up the, the tip as you probably noticed that some of the bristles were um, loosening up a bit and um, yeah it was really hampering the painting in the details so <clears throat> uh, brush soap good stuff all right keeps uh, keeps it uh, brushes healthy
So for the full leather parts, that will be the scabbard, so I'll hit it with some of the wood stain brown. Now he's got some detail on the scabbard of the sword, which is um, three little dots there. I don't know what to do with those yet, I'll probably end up doing a green with it <clears throat> uh, because of his house colors but um, I won't do them till later on so I'll, I'll, I'll paint the, the scabbard fully and I'll go back and get those dots later on I mean I suppose I could make it pop out even more as well by um, doing yellow or, or gold but um, in this case, I, th I think I'll, I'm happy with the green, just to yeah, um, show a bit of emphasis towards his house colors. So yeah, there's some leather bits as well there with the belt. So I'll go ahead and do that. So again with the boots and the uh, hilt of the sword, I'm going to add a bit of Noir Black onto the wood stain brown. So just in the, in the darker parts, I do put a little bit more noir black into the mix, um, just to represent um, a darker tone. So um, <clears throat> under the cape, you know, and obviously in the inner parts of the of the boots. So some of the primer still comes through with the zenithal highlighting, so obviously you're going to have to put a second layer just to get rid of the little, uh, the brighter colors that come through. So the base that I go for for yellow is chestnut gold. Um, I found that uh, going through going through yellow um, uh, with a darker color, um, you tend to go through more layers. A nice brown uh, for a shade and for a base coat is usually a good way to go about it. And um, yeah, I just find it easier. Now obviously people have a hard time painting yellows, um, my only um, recommendation is just to, to just to be patient and to add as much lace as you can, or as you know, you want to be able to fit in the gaps and um, you don't want any of the, the dark or the light to come through the base. So it's important that you start off early, especially with the brown because it's got a good amount of pigment and it just works well as a shadow, this uh, chestnut gold. You know, some people swear by the browns, dark browns, or maybe a, a lighter shade of brown, but um, for me, especially with the Reaper range, I just find that the chestnut gold does the trick. But yeah, you just have to be patient. Um, sometimes you do have to go over it about two or three layers, depending on the on the primer that you use for the, for the initial coat on the model but I do find that this is where the zenithal really helps in the lighter areas I, su I suppose you don't have to be as careful as I'm being right now um, because 
I'm just trying to get it on the armor, but um, I mean, even if you get it on the armor, you can always go over it easy. Okay, so that's the first layer of the chestnut gold down. I'm going to wait for it to dry. Uh, I might have to go over it a second time. Alright, so while the yellow is drying, I might as well go through the, the boots now. So um, I'm going to go for a leathery look. And what I've done for the rest of the Baratheons that I've done is I've, I've usually got a mix of leather. So I'll just have a... Let's quickly run through it. So this one's the rich leather. This is the one that I usually go for for the heroes and stuff like that. Because, you know, they're, they're noblemen, you know, they're, they've got money and they can afford the finest leather in Westeros. So I usually go for the rich leather. Um, plebs, troops, um, sometimes I go for the, the brown sand. Um, I've also gone for the, I really like this color, but it's Lone Star leather. I've gone for, um, uh, on the sentinels, some of the sentinels in the wardens that I've painted, I've gone for the Lone Star leather. And there's another one uh, called Polish leather. So I've done that on the Dothraki because that one's a little bit brighter. Um, and then because Mr. Estamon, he is a noble and um, is an upstanding citizen of House Estamon, I thought I'd go for a rich leather look. So I'm going to put on the palette itself, I'm going to put two drops uh, separately for the wood stained brown on its own and the other one with the mix. Uh, so that'll obviously be for the boots and the hilt of the sword as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the boots. So I'm just going to mix it up a bit. Until I get the tone that I really want. Now the first layer is going to be obviously dark, so you're not going to see that much difference. But um, once you bring it up with the with the rich leather, um, that's when it really that's when it really come through and it really starts to pop. I might have to borrow some of the, the witch leather from here because I didn't put enough. But um, now I'm going to start bringing up the layers. And um, I start off with the areas that obviously they are dry, a bit drier than the others. And just concentrate obviously on the folds and in the, uh, the areas where the, the light is coming through. Alright, so just finishing up on the boots, um, with the final layer, <clears throat> you could add another highlight with the, onto, the, onto the rich leather as well, um, I might just do it on like little tiny bits here and there, because again, the, the, the light's coming from the top, so I might just put it on like the tip of the toes and stuff like that, but um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out so far. Alright, so I've uh, done with the boots. I'll, I'll do the highlight, the final highlight, a little bit later on. So what I've decided to do is just to go back onto the chestnut gold and just uh, work on the bits where the primer from, um, from below is still coming through. Alright, so the next bit I'm going to work on is the actual leather bits.
So I'm going to be using the wood stain brown with the rich leather. And um, the first part is just to mix it a little bit here, and um, I'll just I'll just bring it up. Uh, so yeah, just bring it up with the um, adding more uh, a rich leather uh, for every layer that you do. So obviously the first one's going to be really dark. Um, you might have to do it in a couple of layers. And then um, you could slowly work your way up with the blend or you could just, you know, um, go straight over it with the, with the rich leather. But um, I've, I've chosen to do it slowly. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. All right, so while that leather is still um, drying, I thought I'd cheat a little bit. I'm gonna use some of the fair, the fair shadow, and I'm gonna add it onto the mix that I used for the for the boots and the hilt, and I'm just gonna use that as the final highlight for those little areas. Yeah, normally I would use like a, a more maybe sort of ivory color to go as the final highlight but <laughs> that was there already and I thought uh, can we bother getting the paint out so I might as well just use it while it's there all right so we're gonna we go do the back part That. I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but um, that uh, final bit of highlight is there, including the hilt on the sword as well. Alright, and um, we'll go back to the leather. So this will probably be the second last highlight that I use for the blending for the uh, leather, then I'm going to go into the final stage of the, um, of the leather itself. And that will be straight up rich leather on its own. Uh, again, you might have to do this in um, in two parts. In two layers as well. So that's the leather right there. Again, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna use a little bit of this fair shadow again and use it, mix it with the with the rich leather. And again, I'm gonna pick out some little little details here and there. Again, you probably wouldn't put this this much attention to detail with um, the, the rest of the rank and file, but because Estamont is a hero and um, a pretty prominent one at that, I think he's a, a very good NCU. Um, I think he's going to see a lot of um, playtime, especially with my um, Renly army. So obviously, you know, you want to you want to do a good job with the heroes.
Okay. So again, I'm gonna with those little dots. Now that I finished the scabbard, I can work on those dots now because I'm gonna move on to the green next anyway. So let's go ahead and pick out those dots with green. And now I'm going to be working on the the green tunic. So again, mix it up. This will probably be done in about one, two, three, four, five, maybe five, six layers, depending how um, how much how much more uh, highlight I want to do. But um, I definitely want him to stand out. So we're still continuing to bring up the green. Um, I'm still only up to the first layer of the green mixed with the the dark green with the mid-tone green. I'm gonna slowly bring it up. <clears throat> and um, don't forget to do it on the on the buttons, little circle bits on the scabbard itself. Alright, so we're going for the mid-tone now. That's um, a little bit too wet. But um, I guess that'll do. We could always bring that up in uh, two layers. Now the green is the primary color that um, that House Estimate proudly wears on their sigils, so I probably want to spend a bit more time with the green in this case, just to make it really pop out from the model. Yeah, just continue along with the green. Alright, so the next layer is uh, a cross between the mid-tone green and the highlight of the green. So the back of the cape, like with that, the underground part there, I mean, it's the, the light's not really going to hit it that much, so I probably don't have to do as much highlights there, but around this area here, definitely do. Alright, so we're going to finally go through the last layer. Um, actually, I could go over, over it again with another layer with a hint of yellow um, before I do that. Clean, quickly clean, clean the brush. Alright, so we're gonna go over it with the highlight. I think this one is Viper Green. See, I can't even remember the, the names of the Reaper ones because there's so many of them. Actually, you know what? I might just do one more little bit of um, two more layers. I mean, so yeah, I decided to do two more layers instead so this one's gonna be still gonna have a mix of the, the mid-tone green won't worry about the final highlight with the yellow I think it's um, <clears throat> it's popping out just nicely So again, the back doesn't really have to get that much attention. It's really just um, the front, his garments, whatever you want to call it. Definitely his pants. Looks 
saw a little kilt as well underneath all that armor as well. A little kilt going on. I'm not worried if I get it on the chestnut. I'm gonna go over that with the with the yellow anyway. And finally, just um, wipe the green on its own. And uh, can't forget the dots on the scabbard. So little bits here, little bits there. Put that to dry, and I'll give it the final layer of viper green as well. All right, I still think it's uh, it's good enough to stand out. Oh, missed a little spot here. So that's the the green done so um, I guess we'll move on to the yellow so the next two layers of yellow that I use are the marigold yellow and the sun yellow uh, because that's the, the the color that I've used for the rest of the Baratheons so I'm gonna I'm gonna pretty much stick to that kind of color which is sort of the same shade of color that you see on the box art so you can see there it's probably the closest that resembles to the sun yellow sun yellow with the box art yeah okay so the yellow is a bit more of a painstaking process um, involving a lot more layers so yeah it does require some patience yeah I keep telling myself that I'll never paint an army that has yellow again, especially after I painted about 120 grots with yellow hoods for Cancon um, a year or two back. Yeah, I did about 120 grots. Uh, that's not including the the new models that came out, like the the, the boy and god bounders and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I nearly went nuts. And I thought, yeah, I'm never gonna paint yellow again. But um, look at me. Painting yellow again with Baratheons, it seems like I can't get away from it. Now, yellow is one of those colors where I just feel as though it just, um, if you do it properly, and it just sticks out on the table, you know, it just looks that much better on the table. And, you know, it catches people's attention. People's attention. Um, yeah, it's just got that, you know, that striking natural color. Um, most tables that I play on, it's the, the green fields and stuff like that, um, grassy plains and what have you. So the yellow, when I play on those grassy fields and I, I have the yellow army like um, the Grots or the Baratheons, that yellow really stands out. What I did was actually turn one of the lights off because I've got three lights running so I've, I've, it was just a bit too bright a um, bit too much glare going on so I've turned one of them off and yeah that's, that's so much better it's easier on the eyes as well and um, not as much glare okay, I don't know if you can see that but that's just the first layer of the, a mix of the chestnut gold with the marigold so that's gonna be really your 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 first tone, okay? And um, 
I usually do this into two layers, so I'm, because it's really thinned down uh, from the natural moisture of the of the wet palette. But um, I don't mind that because I, at the same time I want it to be smooth. And if you want the layer of paint to be smooth, you've um, you've got to put in the hard yards and actually put multiple layers. And um, if you do it this way with the multiple layers, I guarantee you you will um, you will see results. Uh, I have another hair yet, so. Um, yeah, again, he's got gray gray hair, so we'll probably use a um, brownish sort of color for the hair as a base, and then work our way up with the with the white and white and gray. Okay, so it's now it's time to do the second layer of marigold yellow, mixed in with your mix earlier on for the first layer. While I'm waiting for the other areas to dry, I'm going back to the other areas and I'm slowly putting more marigold yellow onto it. So this is going to take about maybe two or three layers if you do it properly, if you want to do it properly. You don't have to, but the yellow does turn out better if you do it slowly and you're patient with it. Um, yeah, I just, <clears throat> I mean, obviously you don't want to spend too much time again if it's, you know, your, your pleb infantry, but, you know, because it's a hero, you do want to spend the time on it. So this is about the second layer of, um, of, of paint where I've just slowly added more marigold yellow just to obviously make the blend smoother I mean what you could always do I mean is for for a quicker process um, <clears throat> I guess what you could do is um, not put as much layers and slowly build it up and then later on with the recesses you would just hit it with a, a glaze of some sort of watered down maybe chestnut but um, I will definitely do that for uh, infantry, yes, yeah, but um, for characters, uh, I do like to sp spend the extra time on it. But yeah, I mean, I guess both techniques have their... Um, their merits you know it's like whatever works for you I guess you know um, yeah I mean there's no right or wrong way of doing it you know whatever you're more comfortable with I guess it's, I guess is the way to go just add a little bit of water to that mix okay so this is gonna be pure marigold yellow now okay and I'm just gonna go over I'm gonna start just putting it the very high where the light is going to hit the most. Okay, so I'm, I guess the point of all this is obviously for the blend, and number two, um, it makes the the cloth a bit smoother as well. Especially if it's watered down. Okay, so we'll just wait for that to dry. Uh, oh, actually. Put in the areas here as well. Okay, and while that's waiting to dry, I might as well fix up the little area where 
I missed out on the belt, which is really where the buckle is, just there. Yeah, we'll probably do this the armor last because uh, I want to add maybe um, a hint of blue, uh, maybe like a wash down uh, contrast blue contrast paint, just like at the very top of the armor. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. I haven't even done this bit here yet. Uh, I don't know what I'm what color I'm gonna do. Uh, <clears throat> Redly colors, mostly green and yellow. Um, let's say gold. Let's do gold. Yeah, yeah, we'll do gold. And obviously, we'll do the the face last. Okay, so just touching up little belt buckle there. Wink. There you go. Beautiful. Whoop. There's a spot there, spot here, spot there. Yeah, that's um Yeah, we'll go back to the yellow. So now So that's the pure marigold oop, just um a little bit of little patch there. So it matter because you're gonna fix that later anyway. But um, yeah, there was just like one little patch there. It was taking a little lower, longer to dry. So now the the last part. Let's have a look at the colors again. So sun yellow. Okay. Sun yellow will be your final highlight, and but you're gonna build that up obviously by putting it with the marigold yellow. So. Go ahead and do that. So again, it's uh, it's pretty watered down. So this is probably going to be two to three layers at least. Yeah, just painting the yellow can be so painting thing Ugh, kind of talk. It, it, it's it really does take a lot of patience the yellow. All right, so that's really the first layer of the mix of sun and marigold yellow. So we'll just put more effort here. Okay, obviously we're gonna put more effort there. And then the second layer in these parts here, just to smooth it out. Okay. So we'll wait for that to dry. And then we can add the final the final layer of uh, sunset yellow. Right, so that's what we have so far. So going back to the yellow, um, it's not completely dry just yet. But um, that's what it's looking like. So the the final layer of the sunset yellow, it's going to be really really bright. So you can either um, skip the next layer and um, just go for the bright, really bright look, or you can you can bring it up. So I would probably recommend bringing it up, maybe just one more touch of the sunset with the hint of marigold so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to put it there 
So probably in the areas where the sun or the light obviously is going to hit it the most. I'm sure Esteban's seen a lot of wars over the years and uh, he's loved this yellow cloak that um, uh, that shows his allegiance for House Baratheon. But um, yeah, it's um, it's seen its day under the sun, so to speak. And um, it will have some. Um, uh, it, uh, sorry, it would have you know obviously faded a little bit over the years. Yeah, just um, you know, I'm just mumbling stuff really concentrating on getting those bits right <laughs> all right so one more over here and then we'll do the final highlight of the sunset yellow <laughs> all right so i've just had to clean my brush again because the the bristles are really coming off now um i have i've had this brush for ages it's the um it's the Zero Raphael, and um, yeah, it's just, I've had it for a while, put it that way. <laughs> but lately I've been using the uh, the one as well, the Raphael. I, I haven't washed this one yet, but um, the tip is normally a lot finer, and it stays fine. I find that the one is, it, it just, I don't know, there's just something about it that just where the, the tip stays better i mean obviously the the brush soap helps but um yeah that one stood the test of time this one didn't last as long but it has it has seen a lot of mileage okay so we're gonna do the last layer of um of sun sunset yellow and this one i'm just really going to concentrate on the edges obviously getting thinner and thinner as it goes okay so that's that that'll this, this will be the last layer of yellow i promise Okay, that is how you paint the yellow. How many layers was that? I can't even remember how many layers that was. <laughs> oh, man, look, I've missed some bits here and there. But yeah, but there's um, yeah, there was there's quite a few layers of uh, of yellow there, wasn't it? Oh boy. So can you imagine doing that for 120 grots? Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I don't know if I want to put a three um a freehand design on it now. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just leave it. All right. So before I move on to the hair, I want to um do a bit of shade on the chainmail. So for that. I will be using, if I can find it, if you want a, a sky sort of tinge to your armor, this plate steel is not going to be it, you know, you're going to have to mix it with, um, with a bit of contrast, uh, but this one I, I really love, I mean, it, it's, I don't know, there's just something about it that, hang on, let me just paint it on and maybe you can understand what I'm trying to get at. Right, obviously you're not going to see it while it's still a bit wet, but um, once it's dry, um, I'll show you. So for this one, just for now, I'm just going to do it on the um, 
on the chainmail itself. Later on, I will be doing it on the on the shadows. Um, I'm just going to be painting it on instead of just washing it all in one go and then just go over it, go, going over it again with the shadow steel. I sort of like just like to to pick out um, the shadow bits here and there because I like to do it in streaks. Um, I don't know, it's just just a personal thing of mine. Where I do, with armor, I mean, uh, again, with with plebs and infantry, uh, whatever, just wash it on and um, and just go over it again with the with the color that you've um, uh, that you used initially to to um, to paint underneath. But on um, on heroes, uh, yeah, I just I don't know, man. I just maybe it's because I like more control of where the lines are gonna be in the shadow. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I'm just making excuses now. <laughs> okay, so that's washed. I'll wait for it to dry, then I'll show you what, what I mean. But um, while that's drying, let's go ahead and bring up the layers of the armor itself. So the next lot that I'm going to use, um, can't really see that, but that is Hone Steel, which is the medium tone for the tricolors. And the final highlight is a polished silver. So I'm just going to be mixing the, the three as well as layers and then um, I'll bring it down with the, the blade steel, especially on areas where I want a bit more shadow. Now I find that the mid-tone, you don't really need as much paint for the mid-tone as say um, the dark and the final highlight because I mean you could always mix the two together and it does look nicer when there's um, different tones involved with the metal um, oop. I just find that um, yeah it's just, it's just got more personality when there's different tones in it you know it's not the same dull tone that you see in every model um, Again, if you wanted to have that uniform feel to it, yeah, sure, why not? Go for it, you know. Um, Tri-colors is the way to go. you got your dark, your medium, your, and your final highlight. But again, uh, if you, you put more effort into mixing colors first, and then, um, and then um, using a different technique every time, it's just, um, yeah, it just feels more, more rewarding. So, yeah, I mean, if I do it in this um, this technique, I might not even have to throw in a shade or, or a wash, but we'll see how we go. I suppose there's some areas of the army where you just want it to pop out a bit more. Let's say, um, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, the belt buckle for one, maybe. Um, I suppose if, it, if, if his um, armor had any like um, a crest or something then yeah like why not you would definitely hit it with a, a bit of a maybe thin down wash just so the um, the detail can really really pop out more but um, Luckily, in this case for me, there is not as much detail in his armor. Or well, actually, if at all, there is, yeah, as you can see, literally there's nothing there apart from that little um, line that goes down the middle of the breastplate. The wash is not fully dry yet, so I'm just going to go over the armor again with the mid-tone on its own. Again, I'm not going to need as much. I mean, really, he's just wanted in the middle ground. Uh, the middle parts of the bottle itself. And obviously to smoothen out some areas too.
All right. Now for armor, <clears throat> um, you can bring up the toad as well. Um, in this case, I'm not going to. I'm going to make it as bright as possible on the final highlight. Why? I have no idea why, to be honest. Because I'm, I'm, it's because I'm going to add the shade later on anyway. All right, so with some watered down polished silver just so it can look a little smoother So that's the armor done right there. Oop, forgot a little spot here. The back of the breastplate sitting behind his head. Alright. So <clears throat> the wash is a little bit more well it's drier than what I was what it was before. But it's I don't know if you can really see it, but it's got a tinge of grayish bluish. And um, when that's dry, I'm gonna hit it with the medium tone of the metal which is the hone steel. Um, it probably won't show up as much, but uh, it's it's definitely gonna be there. So, um, while that's gonna dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do um, a, a blade steel on the armor. Uh, we wash down, wash it down with some lamy and medium. Um, so again, the point of the wash down medium obviously is just it won't be as dark, won't be as strong. And I'm gonna gonna go over the edges, and where I think it's gonna be darker than normal. So this little spot here, I guess. Uh, and definitely where the van braces meet the hand on here where the cloth goes over the armor as well And um, because it's darker here, um, I suppose you can you can be more liberal with the that part there. Um, definitely here at the back. So yeah, just a little bit darker than usual. That's that. So again. Um, <laughs> Man, it's it's taking a while for it to dry, but I'm gonna hit the chain mail, the medium tone, and I'm gonna go look for the spots where where I think some of the suns is uh, the light is gonna come through. So that little spot there um, <clears throat> on the arms in the middle, I guess. Other side as well. Pretty happy with that. All right, next up, um, the final bits, the hair. Um, for the hair, the head and the hair, I think I'm going to switch out to my favorite brush, the zero. Uh, the, sorry, the one. Yes, it's bigger, but the the point is better. So I'm going to go switch over to that. Um, so with the brush soap. I tend to just 
have a little bit more. Don't forget to twist it so it keeps the shape. But then I'll wipe the excess off, some of the excess off, so yeah, it's got to find a point the next time you use it. For this one, uh, I didn't wash it from the last session, so I'm just going to quickly clean it a bit, get rid of the excess, and um, I should restore the little point. So for the base of the hair, I'm gonna go with something unconventional, the ghoul skin. So the ghoul skin's got that tone of sort of grayish. So it's got the darkish color. So it's good for a shade. It's also good as a um, as a first layer for aging hair. Okay, so with the aging hair, I'm just gonna bring it up with uh, with grays and whites. Okay, so I'm going to do that first, I'm going to hit it with the ghoul skin. So, start off with the bead. Alright, so I'm just going to go over that. I'm pretty sure he does have a bead, should refer to the art. But if it doesn't have a full bead that connects to the hair, then oops, pretty sure it does. Oh, wait, the picture's right here. Yeah, close enough. So I'm gonna wait for that to dry, but um, it does look a lot younger than what, he, what he's supposed to be. But um, hopefully, that'll change once I start bringing up the white. Alright, so while the hair is drying, um, I'm gonna go, might as well do the skin. So, I've already painted on the first layer of highlight after I've washed it, which was the, the fair shadow. So it's time for me to add fair highlight and the fair skin. Okay. Um, <clears throat> these are pretty bright for skin colors. Maybe that's why he looks so young, because this is sort of like bright color that brings out some youth so what I might do later on is I might go back with the um, with the wash with the mix slimy and medium and just paint over the the frowns and, and the cheek cheekbones especially just so he make, looks a bit more gaunt Alright, so that's um, that's what I'll do actually. So I'll start off with the hands and so I'll bring it up mixing the fair shadow and the fair skin which is the mid tone. So the face, so the face obviously, I mean, you want to try to make them look gaunt. I won't bother doing the ears, but I'll concentrate on the cheekbones. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh -huh. Okay, let's start. Next up is the actual uh, fear itself. Yeah. So again, starting with the hand uh, and the fingertips. Yeah. Uh. Definitely looking more like an old fella now. Alright, so uh, you could give it a medium blend mixing. Uh, I'll do that. Yeah, so I'll mix the highlight, the 
fair how like I'm just gonna go through the form really. Forehead and cheek bones. is definitely better on this. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. Oops, so I'm going to go there. Yeah, here as well. Yeah, one more. Just at the forehead. You can see it, but he does look pretty good there. Okay. In the mix that I had earlier with the Labian Medium and the Flesh Wash, just to go over the cheekbones. Okay. Definitely in the ease. Okay, and maybe just there as well. So on the brow. Okay, so that's that. I might have to give the hair a second layer. Because some of the white is still coming through. So, not too much, probably just a, a thin layer, a really thin layer. So, what I'll do is I'll spread the ones that are, I'll spread the paint that's actually there already. At least that way, that'll help me out with where to put the final highlights. And then I'm gonna bring this up with some grey tones. Probably, I'd say. Not straight up grey, probably um, maybe wolf grey. I say wolf grey. Oh, while I'm here as well, um, I've decided to just paint these greens. That um, I know there's a name for it, but. Um, what clips the cape onto the armor. I'm sure someone knows a name for it. Yeah, I'll just do those green and I'll probably just do like say um, some a couple of dots. Make it look like it's got I don't know the turtle icon. I don't know. I don't know. Probably won't work, but whatever. Okay, so for the hair, uh, let's go with uh, where is Wolf Grey? So that Wolf Grey is turning out to be more elusive than I thought. But an example of uh, sort of the Wolf Grey color is Weathered Stone. Um, obviously, um, <laughs> Weathered Stone. I mean, it's it's all the name, isn't it? You want to use it as a as a dry brush or the final highlight on stone but um, it does make for a good sort of grey and then you sort of bring it up with the white um, for 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 that lighter look so what I might do is I might just use this because I cannot find that stupid wolf grey I know it's around here somewhere ha found it wolf grey so it's it's pretty much the same as weathered stone except it's um, a little bit darker um, hang on, let me just shake it up a bit and I'll show you. Yeah, so that's what I was using on the staff banners as well. 
actually I'll quickly color label that so I don't lose that again yeah, just to where the grays are but um, if you can see so that's the ghoul skin right there um, on, oh I shouldn't have done that now oh, anyway that's the ghoul skin that's wolf gray that's where it's done so you can sort of bring up those colors with those three colors already so I might do that actually I might add a bit of white later on but um, you get what I mean those are the three colors that I'm just gonna use so it'll be the ghoul skin first and I'm gonna mix that with wolf gray start off with mustache and the beard the angle of the camera all right and then um, Alright, then uh, straight over with um, is it stone? Definitely looking a lot older now that the the grey is starting to come through. Maybe that's a bit too bright. So what I'm going to do, yeah, do it mostly around the edges. Okay, so here. Okay, so that's that. I just add a little bit here. Yep, that'll do. And of course, let's do the eyes. that um, not forgetting to do this bit here so I may have stuffed up the eyes just a little bit so what I'll do is I'll just put it back using some washes especially in the, in the darker area Never get eyes right. <clears throat> uh, what color eyes does Esteban have? Let's have a look at the card. So Esteban does look like he have he has dark green eyes. Yeah, dark green eyes will do. Which is perfect because I have it on the palette already. Oh. 
And again, just a bit of wash, just to go over the excess spots that I did with the light. And then, obviously bringing up the green again. For this little thing that attaches the cape to the armor. Surely somebody knows the name of that. Okay, so that's Estimos looking mighty fine now. It's looking mighty old too. <laughs> Alright, so, um, but if you thought that was finished, guess again. So we've done the model. Now what I've done with my, uh, with my more recent characters is I've added a bit of something onto the base. So I don't know if you've noticed, but he's off the center. So I've cut him off the base and I've put him at the edge just so enough for me to add something onto the onto that part of the um, of the base just to you know make it stand out a bit more uh, while I'm here I might as well add some white green and I'm gonna make this the thing we were just talking about a bit more shiny so that bit there that be here. Just a little bit more. Yeah, let's make it look shiny. So wait for that to dry a little bit. Yeah, while while that's drying, I'll explain that. So I've decided to put like a table and um, some bottles. Um, I think it's got a book as well. Let's have a look and. Where did I put that thing? Ah, here we go. It does have books. So it's this little PC. So you can get these pieces from WizKids. So the table itself is from the, the WizKids Pathfinder range. Along with the books and that little bottle there. Okay, so there's other parts that you can get from the Terrain Crate too. That, that, those pieces are insanely detailed. And they're really good. It just adds that little extra to the model. Okay. So I'm probably going to paint the, the books, a couple of the books, uh, red, blue, and this one I'll just keep it as uh, a sort of like um, a stone grey kind of colour. Alright, so I'll keep it nice and simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that to the front. So yeah, that, that adds um, some flavour onto the model. Okay. So yeah, ha, huh, just when you thought I was done. Um, before we work on this, I will add the color on the base, which is going to be Steel Legion Drab, because that's what I've done for the rest of the army. This one here. Just be careful not to get it on the on the boots. I mean, even if I get it on the boots, I'm not going to be too fast because I can always just cover that with tuft. Alright, so that's the Steel Legion Drab on the model. That's going to take a while to dry because there's quite a bit of it. So what we'll do is I'll set it aside. Hopefully it doesn't fall. You know what, I'm going to put it there so it doesn't fall onto the palette and just destroy everything if it does. So obviously this is going to be a wood stain brown on the, oh, on the wooden table. So I'll go ahead and get wood stain brown and add it to the pile where it already was. This is just over here. And I'm just gonna go. I mean, the detail on the on the, on the wooden piece doesn't have to be like, you know, outstanding or, 
uh, yeah, you don't want to spend too much time on it, I guess. Because, but if you do, it obviously makes your model stand out more. It's going to make it look more impressive. And um, I guess the more attention it gets from your opponent or, you know, from the uh, people at the tournament that you're playing at. Or, yeah, people at the shop that see models, they look at it and they go, wow, man, he's spent so much effort and time, not only in the model, but like this little side piece of the model that, a uh, uh, side piece furniture that you've put in, like you really put in the effort. Yeah, it's, it's um, definitely gives you a sense of satisfaction. And then I guess we'll do blue ultramarine shadow. Yeah, why not? In case you're wondering why I did that, it's just so I put the paint on the lid, so when I put it back onto the rack, so I sort of got like a bright, a rough idea of where that color is. Even though, yeah, it turns out to be a wolf grey white, can't find a little bastard. Okay, so, blue. Again, you can go hand with the details on this. In the bottom book, um, ah, it will be boring. We'll just make it wood stain brown. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Of course, it won't stay wood stain brown. I mean, obviously, I mean, I'd probably just do like a leather bound book, so. Um, uh, we'll just use rich leather because it's on the palette already. Why not? But obviously, I mean, you could change it up. Also, while I'm here, um, the pages are going to be wood stained brown as well because it's not going to really matter. I mean, you're going to go over that with it, some sort of ivory color anyway for the pages. The main thing is that none of the white show with the um, with the priming because I did Zenothal that as well. Um, reason being was that the other stuff that I was priming uh, were attached to the same um, handle that I was priming this with and you know those pieces have a bit more detail so I wanted to zenith fill them so I could pick out the details easier and this just happened to be there that's why I that's why I'm gonna go ahead and grab the mountain stone and that'll be for the flask all right now I mean you can go all fancy make a clear glass um, and paint it on, but I think I just I just want to I'll make this one simple. Make this one simple. Okay, so mounted stone, and I've got um, I've got weathered stone there already, so I'll just use that. It's gonna need a good stabbing. Right. Stab, stab with a baby pin. There you go. I guess we could do the jar bit of justice and make the top bit 
don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little groove. We'll make that cork. So we'll paint that brown. And just go over it with the same color with the, that I'm going to use on the pages as well. Okay. All right, so I'll grab the mid-tone of the ultramarine shadow with ultramarine blue. All right. And luckily, I kept the white there because the white I'm going to use on the spine of the books just for like um, some detail. It's taking longer to dry. We're going to hit it with. The next layer up with the wood stain brown, which is shield brown, and the final layer is driftwood brown. Okay. Oop, what happened there? Oh, that's caked a lot. Oof. So that's the shield brown there. And just put brown will be right next to it. Okay, so it's wood, so I mean, you want sort of unnatural patterns, so. I mean, you could pretty much just go ham. I think the brush would have been okay too, but um, actually, we'll do that for the next bit. Go back straight, driftwood brown. Let's go over the edges. All right, so that's that. Don't want to add too much. Okay, so that's that's the table for you. Okay. Go with the ultra green and blue. Blue book. You don't have to add as many layers on the book with the yellow. I mean, it doesn't have to be pure yellow either, just um, a worn sort of color, I guess. Yellow. <clears throat> and because rich leather is there already, we'll just use rich leather for the bottom book. I guess it doesn't have to be perfect, but it always helps. And then, <clears throat> go with some weathered stone. I'll just add that to the spine of the book. And that. Um, mix wolf grey with mountain stone. Oh man, 
can't even see the name anymore, but it's 09143. Um, I'm pretty sure it's something ivory. But uh, it's got a nice beige color to it. And I'm going to be using that on the cork. Okay. Oh, in there. <clears throat> okay. And then you can also use it as sort of like on, uh, I guess, on the spine of the book. But um, all right, so now that the table is done so yeah you see table done just gonna add it to the model all right so I mean I've already prefixed it so it could well not prefixed but sort of wanna oh, have a look at this all right so I'm just going to glue it on. Sorry, I'm focusing, but yeah, I'm going to glue it on now. So that's what it looks like when it's glued on. So all you got to do now is really just to add the base so yeah um, I, I hope you learned something from that from this painting tutorial um, definitely gonna add uh, some more painting tutorials in the future um, next guy will probably be um, Courtney Penrose which is the uh, commander I intend to use Alright, so thanks for watching guys, um, if you do like like these videos, um, just like, subscribe, leave a comment, and, but the, the likes go a long way, alright, um, yeah, thanks for watching guys.